So aerodynamic forces is a feature which enables for having aerodynamics inside of the Roblox Studio engine. And this dev forum post talks more about them and also shows you how you can set them up, but I will show you that in the video. So you first need to enable them from a beta feature. You have to go to file, then beta features, and then it should be right here at the top. You will just press this checkbox right here to enable aerodynamics. You would press save and then restart studio. And what this allows you to do, now you have a property in the workspace called fluid forces right here. Here, then you need to change to experimental. Then you also have a global wind, which is a vector free value, so we could give it like 20 on the X. And to see the wind direction, you can go into view and then press on this flag, which says wind direction. I'm just going to move this box out. And this is going to show you the wind direction detected by the blue arrow that you can also change around. You have the speed that you can also switch. You have the yaw and you have the pitch. And changing these values also updates them in the property window right here. So I'm just going to leave it at like a low value. Then you have the air density property in the air properties. And as it's provided, the aerodynamic forces scale with it. This is where you modify it. And the density represents the air density at Y0 level, where its default corresponds to the realistic sea level air density at standard temperature and pressure. But now there is a question on how can I make a part aerodynamic? Well, let's start off by adding a part. I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger and just move it up. And now if I just hit run, you can see that nothing special really happens. And that's because you need to go into the part and scroll down into the properties. And in the behavior, you need to enable fluid forces. So I can enable this and do a run test now. You can see that it's falling slower than previously. And if I rotate it like this, so it's going to be pointing against the wind and do a run test now. You saw that it went in a smooth motion as it would behave on the wind. I'm gonna move it higher now to demonstrate the effect a bit better. So yeah. And if I make the part bigger, you can see that it behaves differently. And that's because it has more mass. And if I change the wind speed, let's say, to like a really high value and do a run test now, it's going to just fling the part right there. I can even move the part here again and just move it up. So with this, you can see how different parts behave with the aerodynamic forces. And even if I do a play test instead of a run test, I will have my character right here and I am currently being moved by the wind. If I go to workspace and change the wind direction or the wind value back to 20, I'm just going to move way slower because the wind isn't that strong. But if I change it back to 100, it's going to keep moving me. And if I jump, I'm not on the ground and it's going to be moving me like this. And that's because of the wind profile. When in the real world, the wind transitions from a low speed near the ground, where the surface slows it down, to a higher speed at basically higher meters. So this is the scale as I provided. And this one is without the blocky avatar. And then there are also examples with the aerodynamic forces. I'm going to show them in the video. So one is a rotatory blade that slows down as it moves more. A second one is the airplane. Then you have a glider which you can control, but it works with the new character controller. And then you have maple trees and leaves. So we have this blade right here. The fluid forces are enabled. And these parts also have enabled fluid forces right here. And this shows that with the fluid forces enabled, the spinner falling down should be affected by the aerodynamics. So let's see. And it in fact was. Then there is the plane that I'm gonna try to get into. Okay, so you have yaw, you have up down, and then left, right. Then you have eject. Okay, this is uh, really cool. Yeah, controlling a plane by aerodynamics seems like a really cool thing. So you have Q and E. Okay, in before I fall into the void. Okay, what does... I want to see the eject, what does it do? It just ejects you, okay. Oh, and there is a parachute, wow. Although I'm falling into the void, but you can see how a parachute can work with aerodynamics. Okay, is it in the... Where would the parachute be? This is the parachute creator. Okay, and it just creates the parachute from this. So, let me hit play and just eject. 
Okay, now you just created the parachute. So I'm going to go into my character and just copy the parachute tool and paste it in. So this is the parachute, which is made from basically a lot of parts where everything is connected to the handle with rope constraints and they are connected to each other with spring constraints. So this just shows you that everything is basically moved by physics. But by the way, guys, do you know that I have channel memberships where you can support me while also getting these perks on my channel and my Discord server, which you should totally join, by the way. But by supporting me, you also have access to my first asset pack. But anyways, back to the video. Then here is me forgetting to record the glider part. So let me just quickly fix that. So this is the glider slice and you have the controls right there. So if I play test it right now, we have this glider tool right here, which you can control by using U, J, H and K, but I'm pretty sure I need to jump off first. Like this. And yeah, I am able to actually control it. Okay, maybe a bit too much. And yeah, you can see that it's also slowing me down while falling. So again, I'm going to jump off the glider. And just move around with the settings if it allows me to do so well. I don't think this one was a good try. The glider is constantly being moved by the wind, I'm guessing. That's why it's acting like this. But if I want to go to the left, I can press H. And the glider is going to break again, of course. So let me just try again. Okay, this time it's actually taking me a bit to the left. And the glider isn't breaking. Okay, never mind it is. But you get the idea. This is basically a glider that you can make with aerodynamic forces, which you can also control by different keys. And controlling it is just basically changing the length of the rope constraint. And then there is the maple tree. So you have a leaf box and you have drop leaves. So it's inside of the replicated storage and it's, it's a seed instance and also a leaf instance. So I'm going to run it. And these leaves are being affected by the wind where the leaves and seeds are also instances. And I'm guessing that they are doing it this way because we don't have a collision system on particle emitters. And I need to say that having a particle collision system which would work with the aerodynamics too, with the warp space wind and such, would be a really cool feature. But yeah, that's going to be everything for today. So thank you guys for watching and see ya.